Georgetown and UConn, the Huskies, they've won three straight games and seeking their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2016. And it was all UConn from the jump. RJ Cole dishes to Isaiah Whaley, who drains the three. UConn up five. A minute later, James Booknight crosses over, gets into the lane, throws down the one-handed right-hander. Next, UConn, RJ Cole leaves it for Booknight, able to drill that triple that caps a UConn 12-0 run to start the game. So 13 minutes left in just the first half, Cole finds Booknight, again, able to connect from long range. He had 18 points and three rebounds in this one. With nine minutes left, Tyler Polly he skips it to Jalen Gaffney, sinks the corner tray. And less than two minutes later, Cole in transition. Watch this dime, a bounce pass to Gaffney for the hammer dunk. UConn up 17. Gaffney had 12 in this one. So two minutes left in the first half. UConn up 22. Andre Jackson drops it down to Tyrese Martin, who goes up and under for the layup. And later, Martin on the drive drops the reverse layup. UConn up 28. They score a season-high 51 points in just the first half. They win easily. Huskies never trailing in this one, 98-82. UConn covers the nine and a half spread. Our Gary Parrish, he took UConn earlier on HQ while the over 139, that hits. Well, that was a semi-surprising finish. We saw UConn there with that big lead at the break. But Matt, I want to get your reaction to the game overall. Well, really good win for UConn. We said at half that we thought that Georgetown was going to be able to come back and get inside that number. It did. It was plus 28 in the second half, so Georgetown covers. But listen, the takeaway is that UConn is playing at the kind of level that Hurley hoped it would be. Dan Hurley hoped it would be able to be doing at this point going into the Big East tournament. If you're a UConn fan, you're overjoyed. You're, you've got a clear-cut NCAA tournament resume. You're a lock at this point. Uh, there's nothing that can happen that's going to jump bump, bump UConn out of the tournament. It's easily in the field. Projects as a single-digit seed. Jerry Palm's got him on the eight. Line. And this is, frankly, this is an exciting, let's talk about how this is an exciting moment for that fan base. I'm a little connected to it in that I live in Connecticut. I've got a wife who's a UConn graduate. And, and this has been something that the fan base has been waiting for five, six years for. You know, after they won the 2014 National Championship, that was a huge moment. But 2015, 2016, 2017, the program uh, certainly took a, a big step back. They, they just begged to get back into the Big East. That prayer was answered. And now a return to Madison Square Garden next week, going to the NCAA tournament for the first time in five years. Dan Hurley has this program rolling with at least one future pro, more coming in the in forthcoming recruiting classes. And so there, I promise you, there are few fan bases that are just more generally elated right now this weekend heading into conference tournament play than UConn because they have been craving for this for a long time. If you just look at the final score, I'm sure Dan Hurley is happy. You know, a 98-82 victory over a Georgetown team that had been playing pretty well is, is a nice victory to record. But, but allowing 58 points uh, to be scored on you in the second half is something I, I know Dan is not pleased with. So it takes a little of the joy out of the win. But big picture, that's four straight, four-game winning streak heading into the Big East tournament. And I, I really do think this is probably the team to beat in the Big East tournament. Connecticut, I mean, uh, Villanova, rather, just lost its point guard in Colin Gillespie. Uh, there's obviously um, some issues at, at Creighton right now. Unclear if Greg McDermott is going to coach in the Big East tournament. If you asked me to pick a Big East tournament champion at this moment, I would go with the UConn Huskies. And I know Jerry Palm has UConn as an eight seed right now. I think they're going to end up much higher than that. And the reason is because, you know, the selection committee is going to evaluate UConn based on the roster that, that UConn's going to take into um, the, the NCAA tournament. And that roster includes James Booknight. And they have been awesome this season with James Booknight. They're 10 and 2 with him in the lineup, 4 and 4 without him. He's a clear difference maker. And that doesn't mean that the selection committee will just forget about what they were without James Booknight, but this will be part of the conversation and it's going to benefit UConn and it's gonna help them, I think, get off of that eight seed line, which is uh, incredibly important if you're trying to advance to the Sweet 16, because if you're an eight seed, you win your first game, congratulations. Now you're running into Gonzaga, now you're running into Michigan, now you're running into Baylor, things get really, really difficult. But if you can get 
you know, to a to a seven or to a six, even uh, maybe even a five. Well, now your second game in the NCAA tournament, provided you win your first one, is much more manageable. And more than anything, that's the trick to getting to the Sweet 16. You got to stay out of that eight nine game. UConn is playing in a way it looks like it's going to stay out of that eight nine game. It was tough sledding for the beginning for the Hoyas in this one. We saw it was a 12-0 deficit to start the game. We knew they had a lot of ground to make up. So, GP, what are your biggest takeaways from yet another bad loss from Patrick Ewing's squad? Well, if you're Georgetown and you're looking for, you know, moral victories, you can say that, hey, we had every reason in the world to pack it in at halftime. We're down 27, we're uh, on the road, we're playing a, a superior team, and we're not going anywhere anyway. Um, and, and, and we didn't pack it in. Uh, you know, we played, we competed, we scored 58 points in the second half on a team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, I don't know how much that's worth. You know, at this point in the Patrick Ewing era, um, you shouldn't be celebrating, you know, double-digit losses. Uh, but again, if you're just trying to grab onto anything that you could call a positive, the fact that Georgetown came out and played in the second half, uh, I think falls under the umbrella uh, of a positive. You know, uh, Georgetown is locked in uh, heading into the Big East tournament. It's on the seven line. No matter what, it, no matter what else happens the rest of Saturday, it's just a matter of who it will play. Marquette's the ten as we speak right now. Uh, Providence and Butler see how their results come in there. So weirdly, the loss is obviously dispiriting from a seed standpoint. And in the big picture, I mean, if you're if you're Patrick Ewing and you consider everything that you lost. The la from last off season, you know, all the de the widespread roster defection, and you wind up finishing seventh in the seating uh, in the seating for the Big East tournament. That's a decent gain. Again, they'll be better. I think next year they've got a solid class coming in there. Um, it, they, they have a chance to at least get a win in the Big East tournament. We'll see what happens from there. But uh, you know, they did about as much as you could ask them to do in this spot against UConn. They had to hope they caught UConn completely overlooking them. Uh, you know, heading out to to postseason play and just thinking this was a throwaway game. UConn didn't treat it like that, particularly on offense. Defense, GP is right. The second half, Dan Hurley's, you know, he might have a few words to say. But overall for Georgetown, it's a tough loss. We'll see if they can rally and uh, and get a win, maybe two in the Big East tournament and make some noise in, in New York City. And we have seen uh, Dan Hurley, they're very spirited on the sidelines in games. You can only imagine what he's saying about that second half performance. You guys both mentioned just how good of a game, at least the first half, right, for UConn was. Villanova no longer has Colin Gillespie. So what is the ceiling for this UConn team as we look, Matt, to the conference tournament, but also March Madness, do you think? So I th Parrish, you know, I think we should talk about that on Sunday's FGP, by the way. Let's talk offline. Let's, let's link up here. I like what you're bringing with that. UConn winning the Big East Tournament Championship because Villanova, no Gillespie. We wait to see what the situation with Creighton is. Uh, I think the, I think UConn actually might wind up being a bit of a chic pick in the three spot there to take the title in Madison Square Garden. Again, that would be, <laughs> frankly, UConn returning for, uh, get back into the Big East and go to the Big East Tournament and win it uh, this year would be, uh, that'd be a heck of a story heading into the NCAA Tournament. So I think it's ceiling is winning the Big East Tournament Championship. Once we get into the NCAA Tournament, Sherry, I mean, it's going to depend on the bracket there. I don't think this team has a Final Four ceiling. Uh, I would say Elite Eight. If it got the right kind of matchups, the right kind of draws, I think that's... And that's a, that's a good one, by the way. That's something that UConn fans six to eight weeks ago couldn't have even imagined, I don't think. You know, now that Book Knight has not only... He's returned, he has looked just as good as he did before. Uh, certainly that's there. It is it is an interesting situation for the Huskies to have so much positive momentum going in. We'll see if they can carry it with the Big East Tournament, and then hopefully uh, everything goes well for that program once they get on the ground in Indianapolis. I'll keep this simple. I would take UConn on a neutral court over any other Big East team right now based on the circumstances that we're seeing play out in that league. Villanova doesn't have Colin Gillespie. Creighton doesn't have its coach. Uh, UConn, the only two teams you could possibly argue in the league that are better than UConn are those two, and, and they're missing things right now. Meantime, UConn's on, on a four-game winning streak, so they don't have Kimba, they don't have Shabazz, but they do have James Booknight, and he's, he is the type of player that can absolutely lead them to a Big East tournament title, which I think could maybe get them up to around a five seed, perhaps even a four, and now you're talking about a team that is positioned to make a run in the NCAA tournament. A lot for UConn fans to look forward to. Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish, we appreciate the time and insight as always, my friends. Thank you.
And get more from Matt and Gary in the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Maybe a little teaser there, UConn fans. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.